Good morning, everyone. My name is Brady Witten, and it's my privilege to welcome you to online worship here at First United Methodist Church. And I know this is probably how none of us pictured spending our Sunday morning, but it is good when the people of God can gather wherever we are for worship. And so I hope you'll enter into this time with a spirit of worship. I hope you'll sing along and participate at home or wherever you are as together we worship and praise God. Let's go to God together in prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for the gift of technology and that we can gather as your children all over the city of Baton Rouge and the world. And so, Lord, I ask that you would pour your spirit and your presence upon each person who's watching wherever they may be. And Lord, remind us that you've told us that in this world we will have trouble, but to take heart because you have overcome the world. Lord, be with us as we worship and praise your name. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is not what any of us planned for uh, our Sunday morning. Uh, At First Methodist in Baton Rouge, we were planning to move back into a newly renovated sanctuary this morning, and we were also launching a new campus in mid-city Baton Rouge. Um, So not, not what we had in mind for this morning, and I know that many of your personal plans have been disrupted as well. This is really an unprecedented time. I remember uh, other viruses and other illnesses that have sort of gone around the world. I remember SARS. I remember H1N1. Maybe some of you remember those as well. But this is the first time in my memory I ever remember uh, large public gatherings uh, being uh, canceled. And in Louisiana, the governor's actually ordered that any gathering over 250 not happen. And uh, also, it's the first time I remember uh, schools being closed. So again, here in Louisiana, our schools are closed right now through April the 13th. And so, really, these are, these are unprecedented times. I don't know what other, other word to use. Um, but not everyone is unsettled or unhappy about these cancellations. Uh, I've got three kids, and my two boys came home yesterday, and they were just on cloud nine. They came through the front door of the house and said, Dad, school's canceled for a month! And they were, they were just really super excited about it. Uh, that was until one of them got an email from a teacher with an assignment that's due Tuesday. So... Uh, they lost a little bit of their enthusiasm after that. But while I think all of us are going to be inconvenienced by COVID-19, for others, this is much more than just an inconvenience. Uh, I was struck when I found out that retirement communities and nursing homes are being placed on lockdown for fear of the virus uh, affecting the elderly population. Uh, A friend of mine's brother is on hospice. And he commented the other day that the last time he saw his brother may be the last time he gets to see his brother. And so that's very serious for those folks. Um, I know that many of us have talked about being able to work from a distance, and some of us are privileged to be able to do that. Uh, But I know doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals don't have that option now, and they're on the front line of all that's going on. And so again, this is very serious and very real to them. Uh, small business owners, some of, some of them have shared with me and others who might be hourly employees have shared with me that they're really concerned about the financial implications of all this. And certainly uh, those who are more mature in our midst, and I won't name any numbers, or those who might have uh, compri- compromised immune systems or other underlying conditions are genuinely worried about their health and safety. And so these are times that are producing a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry and a, and a lot of fears. So what can we, as Christian people, do in the midst of these anxieties and fears? How should we navigate these times? So in just a moment, I want to read to you a portion uh, from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, the letter of Philippians. But before I read it, I think it's important that you know that most scholars believe that when Paul wrote these words, he wrote them uh, while he was imprisoned in Rome. And he talks about this imprisonment several times in the first chapter, if you want to read it for yourself. But it's interesting that even though he's writing this from, uh, from, from jail or while being imprisoned, the words of Philippians are some of the most hopeful and optimistic words in all of Scripture. So here this reading from the fourth chapter of the letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, 
let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So again, what can we learn from Paul, and particularly what can we learn from this reading that we just heard about navigating these anxious and troubled times? I think the first thing we can learn is this. We need to navigate these times prayerfully. So Paul says that we should come before God and we should make our supplications and our requests known to God. So I got to tell you that in my own prayer life, there was a time where I was a little reluctant to come to God with sort of my requests or my, my laundry list of things. Um, I was a little hesitant and, and careful about wanting to, not to treat God like some kind of a genie, you know, dear God, please, here's my wishes, or to treat God like Santa Claus. And I, I do think we should be careful about those things. I think for a time, what I really wanted to focus on was uh, accepting the blessings that God had, had put into my life and trying to believe that uh, God was already bringing me what was best and that I needed to learn to accept those things and be grateful for those things. But over time, as my relationship with God has developed, I've realized that just like I share the things that I want, the desires of my heart and my needs with my friends, with my wife, and maybe with my children, that I should also be comfortable bringing those wants and those needs to God. And so I've become a little more comfortable just coming to God and saying, okay, God, look, here's the way I want things to work out. If I could have my way, here, here's what I'd like to see happen, God. And, and I sort of share those with God. And those are known as prayers of supplication. And I would encourage you in this time to make those supplications to God. Uh, of course, I think many of us have been praying for the leaders in our nation. If you're not, you should be. Pray for them. Uh, pray that they might find wisdom, that they might uh, make, make wise and, and good decisions for the people in our country. I think uh, certainly we have been praying for those who are sick around the world. I think we, we can pray for our own families and pray for God's protection and God's peace and God's comfort. And so I think as people of faith, we need to bring all these concerns before God. But I've also heard some people say, well, if we trust God and if we're lifting these things to God, do we also need to take these other precautions that civic and health leaders are asking us to take? Or, or should we just completely rely on, on our faith and spiritual power? So many of you know that I had open heart surgery a little over three years ago. And I can tell you that I appreciated the prayers of many people, people who prayed for my health and my strength and my recovery. Uh, I prayed myself that God would see me through that difficult time. But I also believe that God answered those prayers through the, the wonders of modern medicine and through the knowledge and skills and courage that some of my doctors and my nurses had to have as they sort of led me through that situation. So I don't feel like faith and wise action are opposed to one another. So I, I would encourage us as people of faith, yes, to pray to God, but also to take wise and necessary steps that we're being told because I believe that those things also can be the answer to our prayers. And the last thing I want to say about prayer is this. We always need to keep in mind that uh, God is not a genie, God is not Santa Claus, and we don't always get what we want. Things do not always work out the way that we want them to. And so uh, one of the other things I've learned to do is I bring my supplication and requests before God, and I say, God, this is what I would like to see happen. I always add to the end of those prayers, Lord, but I know I don't, I'm not always going to get my way. And so help me to trust you Help me to still believe that you are a good God and that you hold my life in your hands. And so uh, I think through this time, we need to be a people of prayer. Another way that we should navigate these times is gratefully, with gratitude in our hearts. So Paul says in our reading this morning that we should rejoice in the Lord always. Again, he tells us, rejoice. And then he goes on to say that when we bring our supplications and our requests before God, that we should do so with thanksgiving. And so uh, if, you're, uh, if your brain works at all like mine do, you, you sort of have to ask the question, okay, what is there to be grateful for in the midst of a global pandemic that has us all a little scared and anxious? Uh, so I'll, I remember an interview that I saw in 2005 uh, on Larry King Live, and the pastor, Rick Warren, who wrote The Purpose Driven Life, was being interviewed. In 2005 was a particularly difficult year for Rick Warren. His wife had been diagnosed with cancer. But this is what I remember about that interview. He said, I used to think that life was hills and valleys, 
that you go through a dark time, but then you would arrive at the mountaintop, and then you would go back and forth, valley to mountaintop, valley to mountaintop. He said, but I don't believe that anymore. Rather than life being hills and valleys, he said, I've learned to see it like two rails on a railroad track. Can you picture them kind of running together? Uh, At times, uh, you have something good going on in your life, and at the same time, you'll have things that are challenging and difficult going on. No matter how good things are in your life, there's always something challenging and something difficult. But listen to this. But no matter how bad things are, there's always something that we can give thanks to God for. Listen to that again. No matter how bad things are, there's always something that we can give thanks to God for. And so uh, I was thinking this morning of some things that I'm thankful for, and I want to get you thinking maybe uh, about some of those things as well. Despite the anxieties, despite the cancellations, despite the unknowns going on around us, what are things that you're grateful for? So I've got one. My wife, for for, uh, several years now, has us signed up with Amazon for a subscription to toilet paper. And so we have all the toilet paper that we need at the Witten household, um, and no, I'm not going to share my address with you. Uh, I'm also thankful, as I said a little earlier, for modern science and for medicine that uh, will help us to navigate this, uh, this disease. I'm thankful for doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals. I'm, I'm thankful for mass communication, that we can get word out about these things and that we can act together for the good of the whole. How about you? What are some things that you're thankful for? And I really want to invite you, maybe if you're at home alone, you can think some of these things uh, uh, in your own head. Say them out loud. If nobody's there, they're not going to know that you're talking to yourself. Uh, But if you're gathered with your family, will you take just a moment and, uh, and, and share with one another, what are some things that you're grateful for? I mean it. Go ahead, do it. So this may sound like an obvious thing for a a pastor to say, but I hope that all of you had on your list that you are thankful for Jesus Christ. Uh, Because what I've found over and over again as I've gone through difficult and anxious times in my life, that even though we go through these difficult times, even though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, that God is with us. And I trust uh, my life and my future are in Jesus' hands and that my future is secure. Uh, I love the expression, I think it was Corey Ten Boom who said this, that Christians need never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. We don't need to be afraid to trust an unknown future to our known God. So uh, we need to be people of prayer, we need to be people of gratitude, and the final way I think we should navigate these times is with gentleness. So Paul says, let your gentleness be known to everyone. So as I've already mentioned, these are stressful times. Uh, Leaders are having to make difficult decisions. Children, parents, and teachers, routines are being disrupted. Uh, More mature folks and those who have uh, maybe compromised immune systems or other underlying medical uh, concerns are rightly concerned for for their health and for their safety. And with all of those things going on, People are going to be on edge. Have you, have you picked up on that already? That pe- people are a, little, a little, little anxious. Gentleness means recognizing that the world around us is fragile, especially other people. It's recognizing that we do have the capacity to do harm, but it's choosing instead to be tender, to be soft-spoken, to be soft-hearted, and to be full of care with one another, to be careful with one another. When we're gentle, we touch the world in ways that protect and preserve. And I, and I hope that as people of God, that that's what we would, that's what we would choose. So be gentle with others. Uh, be slow to speak. Think about what you're going to say. I know for some of us that's really hard. Uh, be slow to hit enter on your text messages, your emails, and your social media posts. I would say be slow to judge and criticize others. Everybody reacts to stress in different ways. We really do. And so we need to be graceful and gracious to one another. Uh, I read this line this week and I liked it. It said, remember the golden rule. You all know what the golden rule is, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So remember the golden rule and act like it's your turn, right? 
Uh, I would also remind you that maybe the person that you need to be gentle with is yourself. I think sometimes we can be really hard on ourselves. So be gentle with others and be gentle with yourself. So in closing, I want to share something with you that I've found helpful that I read a few days ago. And it's a good reminder that even though all kinds of things are being canceled and all things, kinds of things are being postponed, that there are still many great and beautiful things that we can enjoy. So getting outdoors has not been canceled. Maybe you need to do that. Get out and get a little fresh air and sunshine. Music has not been canceled. Family has not been canceled. Reading has not been canceled. Singing, not canceled. Laughing has not been canceled. Hope has not been canceled. And I would add to that that while worship and on-site church activities may be canceled, being the church is not canceled. And so go out, shine the light and the love of Christ in the world. Check in with other people. Figure out ways that you can care and love for one another during these anxious times. Pray. Be grateful. And be gentle with yourself and with others. Let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks. We thank you again for technology that allows us to gather together as your people, even though we are scattered. Lord, we thank you for your son, for his presence with us, and that in him our futures are secure. Lord, help us to be people of prayer, to bring you our requests and our petitions. Lord, help us to be grateful uh, for the many blessings that are still around us. And Lord, help us to be gentle with others and with ourselves. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.